seems to me that we are at an age when many people challenge the relevance of classical music and uh, feel uh, 2% or 3% of the population interested in such a thing and perhaps it's dispensable if it's not commercially viable. Uh, I couldn't disagree with that more and uh, I think the Mozart piano concertos are very, very well suited to break down these barriers because I have uh, argued elsewhere that Mozart was the Duke Ellington of the 18th century or Count Basie was the Mozart of the 20th century. It wasn't the classical music pianists that we so admire and rightfully so, uh, but what happened in Harlem was a ghetto language, the music came down onto the stands, the charts, they lifted up their horns and they sight read and they really did it. And in Mozart's time exactly the same thing happened. The music still wet, the ink still wet, came onto the stands, they lifted up and they played without rehearsal. And Mozart was improvising all of the time just the way Basie or Ellington, uh, you know, or Art Tatum or any of the other great jazz players uh, was doing. So it's a question of the lingo, of the vernacular. It's not a question of the aesthetic. It's exactly the same. Both of them were cutting edge. But one is a ghetto language in Vienna in the 18th century. The other is a ghetto language in New York in the 20th century. So I'm hoping to show the spontaneity, the freedom of uh, the language and uh, also uh, show uh, how Mozart decorated in the 18th century the the way we know that without making it, of course, dusty and, uh, and boring and scholarly and all of that, uh, but to play and demonstrate these things, which I think uh, should prove of, of some interest to the audience. century or so has seen a progressive divide between popular music, we can call vernacular music on the one hand, and art music on the other, and it's also within classical music divided composers and performers. So nowadays the conservatories of the world, the music schools of the world, train people to reproduce written texts. So they are actors who have all of their lines. Now, you can be a fantastic actor even though you're reading the lines of somebody else. But in classical music, we have a trajectory where in early centuries, the people who played the music had also written it. And so there was a direct connection there. And my feeling is that when you put all of your emphasis on reproducing something brilliantly and accurately, what happens is that risk avoidance is paramount. If you're going to go to an international competition and you play three wrong notes and someone else plays only two, your fear is that that person will win the first prize and you won't. So you don't take any risks so that you have a sheen and an absolute assuredness about how you play. The problem with that is it's not interesting. It's admirable, but it's not interesting. And there's a difference between gymnastics, between sport, the person who can run the the fastest thousand meters and somebody who is supposed to change how you think about the meaning of, of your existence, who causes you to cry, to laugh, and so on and so forth. Well, some people cry and laugh when a football match is lost, but uh, in, in the larger uh, sort of sense, uh, what we need is people taking more risk to personalize how they perform. And this is something that I believe in absolutely. It's one of the reasons why I improvise cadenzas, which is about as a risky thing, uh, thing as you can do, because if I fall flat in my face, what am I gonna do? Pick myself up, dust myself off, and say, well, folks, sorry, that didn't go too well, did it? But my feeling is that even though watching someone crash and burn is not necessarily a great thing to do, it does point out that there's something at stake, and not just whether you have, after playing something a thousand times, reached a level of security where nothing will go wrong. You know, some people like Dewar's White Label because it never varies. Other people say variety is the spice of life, so it says as much about the listener as it does says about a performer such as myself. People ate and they talked. Uh, during performances, and they did a lot of other things too. Those loges upstairs, the box seats, they had curtains which could be closed, and people did things that we'd perhaps not 
better better not discuss at this point. <laughs>